to help God. And every man's allocation is in his location. No man born by a woman is permitted to tell you sorry. I heard what happened. That is not your portion. Your portion is good news in the morning, good news in the afternoon. He never joins any man in the middle. If it's not your alpha, can I show you, he will not be your maker. Things only work for workers. Nothing will ever work until you work. See a thou, a man diligent in his duties. He shall stand before kings and not ordinary people. I like you to know that this is a very serious month. It's a month of new song. I wish you could do better than that. Our focus this month is recovery. I like you to lift your hands to heaven and ask God. Whatever the enemy stole from me, from my family, this morning I ask for recovery. Recovery of my health. Recovery of my finance. Go ahead and speak to him right now. Recovery. Recovery of my health. Recovery of my finance. Recovery of my joy. Recovery of my home. Recovery of all my assets. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Start forth your hands towards me. In this new month, whatever is missing shall be recovered. In this new month, the angel of God will move ahead of you. And bring back your joy, your marriage, your finance, your health, your fruitfulness in the mighty name of Jesus. If that sounds like you, can I hear your most vibrating amen? amen. Recover all, part one. Or Samuel, chapter 30, and verse 3. Let's take it from verse 3. I like you to pay attention to me this month. I will share with you briefly, then we go into prayers. I believe God, whatever was stolen from you shall be divinely restored. That amen could be better. That amen could be most vibrating. Please follow me on this journey. So David and his men came to the city. And behold, it was burnt. Let's acknowledge the Holy Spirit quickly. It was burnt with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. I heard God very clearly that this month, the anointing of recovery will move throughout all our churches. Amen. I wish somebody say amen can be very loud. Amen. The enemy invaded the camp of David and made away with everything that he had labored for. Maybe somebody is looking back and saying to himself, the year is almost ending. What do I have to show? This service is your service. Yeah. As the Lord God liveth, you shall recover everything. Yeah. Let's look at verse 4. 
Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. When David looked at what he had put in, the time, the brain work, the investment, in commensurate with what the devil had taken from him. Scripture says, they cried until there was no more power to weep. Then in verse 5, the people thought of stoning David. In verse 6, 5 and 6, and David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his son and every man for his daughter. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. He encouraged himself in the Lord. If you look at verse 6 and verse 7, David asked Abiata the priest for me to recover everything that the enemy has stolen, I need to log into the spirit. Somebody say, log into the spirit. I need to switch. I need to change strategy. I need to log into the spirit. He called Abiata the priest. Say, let's get into the spirit. In verse 8, and David inquired at the Lord. Read with me, everyone. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, shall I pursue after this troop? Hold on. You see, he is not just pursuing after one man. It's a troop. A troop. Not just one man. Battalion. They came prepared to mock David. Whatever want to rise this month to mock you. If I hear your loudest amen, that thing shall be mocked before the end of this month. And he answered him, pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake and without fear recover all. La jagrabo skerete sebra, lokomban dingu preaktariza, yakuma sebra diakarado. Shaka de se pomo katiada makrata parizo shake da ba de goose whatever you need to recover this month from the hands of the enemy. If I hear your loudest amen, your recovery begins on the spot. This month, somebody is recovering his health. Somebody is recovering his finance. Somebody is recovering his property. Somebody's recovering his investment. You shall recover everything this month. If that is, you cannot hear your loudest say amen. Go to verse 17. Go Samuel 30 and verse 17. And David smooth them from the twin light even to the evening of the next day and there escaped not a man of them save 400 young men which rode upon camels and fled verse 18 let's read together one to go and david recovered all that the amalekite had carried away and david rescued his two wives verse 19 and there was nothing lacking to them, neither small or great, neither sons nor daughter, neither spoil, nor anything that David had taken to them. David recovered all. Let's look at 20. And David took all the flocks and all the heads, which they drove before those other cattle, and said, this is David's spoil. At the beginning of the year, it was not so. The enemy invaded and took everything. But now, towards the end of the year, David recovered everything. Now, the Lord said something to me very striking last night. I know that God has given you everything. 
But ladies and gentlemen, Christianity is a fight of faith. For instance, your fruitfulness as a child of God is non-negotiable. You need to understand that you need to stand in the place of prayer, the altar of prayer, and make a demand of whatever is resisting the manifestation of your fruitfulness. In the beginning, God made them male and female. You need to engage the devil and enforce prophecies to manifest in your life. If you don't want it, don't watch it. Whatever you don't resist will persist. You need to understand how life works. And David said, shall I pursue them? Shall I recover all? And God said, go after the troop. Take delivery of everything they took. Therefore, there is someone here. You need to be radical this month to take delivery of your fruitfulness, to take delivery of your finances, to take delivery of everything that the devil has taken from you. Life does not deliver to desire. Life only responds to demand. That you like it does not mean it's your own. You have to place a demand to take delivery. For instance, by his stripes you were healed. And now you are feeling sick. You have to invoke the power of scripture by faith to enforce your healing. You can't be praying for healing and still be lying down. Say, cover my leg, cover my hand. You have to get up. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In Matthew 8 and verse 17, that the scriptures may be fulfilled, that he himself took and bore all in past tense. This is the scripture that enforced my divine health. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, He himself took, whether in Germany or in America, took is took. Whether in Enugu, Abuja, or Edo State, took is took. He took the HIV, he took the cancer, he took the barrenness, he took the migraine, he took the fibroid, he took everything. He took them. So if God took them, meaning I don't have it. That is how to enforce recovery. Hello, Pastor Charles Osazwa is my name. Religion is man's attempt to look for God. Christianity is a loving father coming to his children. That's why you have all manner of religious bodies. They are looking for God. But what is Christianity? For God so loved the world. And he sent his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him. What was the gospel of Peter in Acts of the Apostles? Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shekiri, Urobo, Ibo, Yoruba. Irrespective of status or tribe. For more blessings and spiritual messages, please join Pastor Chas Osazua on the following station. I saw one scripture in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 17. Now hear this. One of the titles of Satan is that he's the accuser of the brethren. Are you hearing me? He's the accuser of the brethren. His greatest job is to make mockery of what you are expecting. Is to make mockery of your prophecy. 
In the garden of Eden, he said, did God say? Did God not say? And the woman also was gisting. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Did you see that? The devil was angry and went after the woman and her seed. Why? Because they kept the testimony of Jesus. Hear this. The magnitude of your prophecy is the magnitude of attack. The magnitude of your prophecy is the magnitude of attack. Hey, you can be pregnant without menstruation, sir. You can be married and have four the same year. When I read this scripture last night, he went after the woman. What is the woman's offense? Not just the woman. And went to make war with the remnant of her children. Her seed, her children. Why? Because they kept the commandment of God and have the testimony of Jesus. So the devil went after them. Now this is important. The devil is the accuser of brethren. Can I say this? There is nothing you have done that have qualified you to go to what you are going through. Oh, maybe because I did this. Maybe because I have done this. No. Satan is the accuser of brethren. And you need to know, he went after the remnant of our seed. And for those who have the testimonies of Christ. Did you understand that? In Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 24. He said, rise ye up. Take your journey to river Anon. He said, see. And pass over the river Anon. Behold, I have given into thy hand. See how the Amorite, king of Hezbollah, and his land. Begin to possess it and contend with him in battle. I have given you, but you need to contend in battle. I have given you, but you need to practically engage the devil for delivery. Second Timothy 6, verse 12. He said, fight a good fight. Listen, faith is a fight. Faith is a fight. Ephesians 6, 16 is above all taking the shield of faith. That you may be able to quench every fairy darts of the wicked. You cannot recover without pursuing the troop. You must go after the troop, capture the troop, dismantle the troop, then take practical delivery of whatever they took from you. Place a demand on your health. Place a demand on your finance. Place a demand on your marriage. Place a demand on whatever they took from you. Everyone under the sound of my voice in church watching through the internet this morning, the God that sent me is releasing his power. Is releasing his angel. Whatever the enemy took from you, if I hear your loudest amen, there shall be recovery this morning. Yeah. We have established that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. He went after to make war with the woman and her seed because they kept the commandment and the testimony of Jesus. So he made war with them. That's why Hebrews... 1035 said, cast not away your confidence. Very key. Cast not away your confidence, which had a great recompense of reward. You can never wait on God and waste. For they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, shall run and not faint. In Genesis chapter 12, 
God gave Abraham a prophecy, father of nation. That was where his problem began. Before God came, he was living a good life. Before God came, Abraham had no issue, had no problem. In fact, he was not ambitious. He just wanted to live and just enjoy his life and go. It was God that complicated Abraham's life. Joseph was just having a good time with his brethren. And one day, God came in the dream. He said, you are going to be a prime minister. That was where Joseph's problem started from. Before that time, there was no problem. So God complicated Joseph's problem. Oh, God has complicated your life because of the prophecies over your head. If you want to live a normal life, then there is no problem. But if you want to live a prophetic life, then get ready for prophetic confrontation. Get ready for prophetic battle. Esther was already the queen. Mordecai went to her and said, your people want to perish. He said, no, you know there are rules and regulations here. Now, she risked her life. To set a generation free. In my lifetime, I'm going to adopt over 1,000 children. They'll be answering my name. I will treat them like my own children. Give them good life like my own children. And send them into the world to succeed. Because I've realized if you leave this world without touching lives, you have just lived for nothing. The reason why some of you have not attracted God is because everything about you is selfish. Everything about you is selfish. Me, I, myself. Selfish. Now, we can't talk about recovery until we find out what we lost. Before we talk about recovery, we have to find out what was it that was taken. What was it? Let's take stock. If, God forbid, an armed robber comes to a place and rob, you go to police station, the first thing they do is to take inventory. What did they take? Phone. Um, chair. What again? You know what they took. So, Abby? So, they take inventory. Now, why the inventory? To help locate what was stolen. So, when they take inventory, oh, they stole my car. What make? Honda. What year? You say. What is the number? Engine number. Chassis number. Is that not so? Have you not seen on television? Missing person. Yoruba by tribe. Um, age 14, speaks English, last seen on October 1st, 2017, in Guarimpa. Is that not so? Why these details so that the search can be easy? If you do not know what was stolen from you, you cannot go for recovery. So let us take inventory. What actually do you need to recover? What was stolen from you, sir? What do you need to recover? Hear this. No matter the prophecies of scripture, life is not a fun fair, but a warfare. Life is not a playground, but a battleground. You need to understand. Today, I release the anointing of warrior on your life to take delivery of whatever the devil stole from you. I wish your amen could be more vibrant. Yeah. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 12 gives us a guideline of what to recover. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 12 gives us a guideline on what to recover. Let's read together. I want to go saying with a loud voice, what is the lamb that was slain? Hold it. That was slain. That died. 
slain to receive what first power the second thing riches the third thing wisdom the fourth strength fifth honor sixth glory seventh if you have all these things what is left now do you have a focus of what to recover that's the inventory of what the devil stole. Lift up your right hand up. Say, Lord, I take delivery of power. I take delivery of riches. I take delivery of supernatural wisdom. I take delivery of strength. I take delivery of honor. I take delivery of glory. And I take delivery of the blessing. Let's take it one after the other. Let's look at power. Hmm. Now, why do I need power to rule in the midst of the enemy? Psalm 110, from verse 1 to 3. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make thy enemy thy footstool. Verse 2. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thy enemy. Ladies and gentlemen, to be a believer without power is to be crushed in the midst of your enemies. You want to rule, you need power. In verse 3, thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. The people shall be willing in the day of thy power. So the first thing the devil robbed from you was power. In the garden of Eden, Adam was not designed to be admitted in UBTH. Adam was not designed to be poor. Because while you have swimming pool in your house, Adam had rivers. I believe this broadcast has been a blessing to you. To get the complete package of this message and other messages by Pastor Charles Osazwa, visit our Raka Resource Center at Kilometer 10, Benin Supply Road, Obey, Benin City, or call the following numbers. Oh.